What is an urban area? People know when they're in an urban area. You can see it from the sky and tell from where you're standing on the ground. Urban areas have high density. There are lots of people and buildings. However, urban areas also consist of surroundings which may not look like what you think of as urban. As we move outward and away from the busy downtown, there are areas with lower density, suburbs and open spaces, which are also considered parts of an urban area. This video will address the criteria for defining different types of urban spaces as well as boundaries where urban ends and rural begins. There are also areas of the country with multiple urban areas back to back. Finally, we will discuss the importance of tabulating, understanding, and using the data from urban spaces to improve the lives of people in those communities. Urban areas are geographic entities delineated by the U.S. Census Bureau. They are found in every state across the nation. The Census Bureau's Urban Area Classification provides an important baseline set of areas, which are used by a variety of federal agencies, organizations, and researchers for tabulation, presentation, and analysis of data. Urban areas are used to analyze changes in the distribution and characteristics of urban and rural populations and land areas. Prior to the 2020 Census, the Census Bureau's definition of urban was based primarily on population density at the block level of geography. To be considered urban, an area needed to have at least 2,500 people. Because population data at the block level are only available from the decennial census, the Census Bureau had been limited to providing a snapshot of urbanization only once every 10 years. To have the ability to update more frequently, the new metric for defining urban areas is now housing unit density, also measured at the census block level, but maintained between censuses. This change started with the 2020 census. An area must now encompass at least 2,000 housing units or at least 5,000 persons to qualify as urban. This shift in metrics presents a more relevant measure of the developed landscape of urban areas. Additionally, data from housing unit density provides stability for areas with shifting populations such as seasonal communities. The types of land areas within urban areas are varied. The basis of an urban area is the urban core. The urban core has the highest density and is an aggregation of census blocks. The minimum requirement for housing unit density is 425 housing units per square mile. Surrounding these high density blocks are other built up areas, for example, areas containing downtown office buildings, which are also included in the urban area. As we move beyond the urban core, adjacent territories are included to fill out the whole urban area. Blocks with lower housing densities, 200 housing units per square mile, are also considered part of the urban area. These territories may have lower density and a greater variety of land use, such as schools, recreational parks, commercial areas, industrial parks, and strip malls. These areas are also connected to the urban core. Including lower density territories within an urban area also helps link outlying high density areas. Using lower density helps draw boundaries at the fringes of urban areas where urban and suburban development starts to blend with rural uses and allows for more meaningful boundaries. Once the boundaries of an urban area have been defined, you can zoom out on the map and see other urban areas and their relation to each other. Over time, urbanization has caused large agglomerations, areas of continued urban development, in various parts of the nation, Urban areas are delineated after each decennial census. The delineation process can produce adjacent agglomerations which contain individual urban areas that have their own unique economic and social patterns. Commuting patterns are also used to determine whether to split large agglomerations and if so, where to draw the boundaries between the individual urban areas. Commuting data provide a useful measure of daily movement within urban areas and serve as a proxy measure for other kinds of interactions, which help us understand where one urban area ends and another begins. And finally, all population, housing, and territory not included within an urban area is encompassed under the term rural. 
The data and statistics extracted from analysis of urban areas as defined by the Census Bureau have many benefits and uses for a variety of data users. Urban areas provide the cores for the Office of Management and Budget's Metropolitan and Micropolitan Statistical Areas. Some federal agencies use information about urban areas for funding and planning. Under the Department of Transportation, the Federal Highway Administration for Roads and the Federal Transit Administration for Transit Systems. The U.S. Department of Agriculture's Economic Research Service uses Census Bureau urban areas in its various rural and urban classifications, rural housing programs, rural development, and identifying remote areas based on distance to an urban area. In addition to federal agencies, the data provided for urban areas are used by tribal, state, and local governments, academics, grant applicants, and other interested data users. Over the course of a century, the Census Bureau's urban area classification has changed in response to changes in the structure of the urban and rural landscapes, changes in technology, and changes in the variety of data with which to measure and delineate urban areas. Periodic review of the urban-rural classification and criteria ensures its continued usefulness and relevance for statistical data tabulation and analysis and ensures that the delineation process utilizes the best possible data, procedures, and methodologies to represent the evolving nature of urbanization. This allows us to meet the needs of analysts and data users for objective, accurate, and relevant information about the nation's urban and rural population, housing, and the economy.